Hello, welcome to the Thursday, March 4th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, just a quick follow up on the Microsoft Exchange Zero Day that I talked about yesterday. Of course, lots of uh, talk about uh, these vulnerabilities and the associated exploits uh, today. One of the vulnerabilities, the deserialization vulnerability, has been extensively discussed in a blog post. And well, there is sort of some at least pieces of uh, proof of concept exploits out there. Haven't really seen anything about the server side request forging issue, which probably is the most uh, critical one of these vulnerabilities. Rapid7 has a real good uh, blog post. Turns out that they actually uh, were able to detect this as early as February 27th, so last week, and apparently also alerted Microsoft of some of these issues. One of the things that should not be underestimated is that these attacks may be more widespread than your typical targeted attack. It more looks like uh, there are thousands, if not tens of thousands of victims here, at least as far as the US IP address space goes. It appears that it was entirely scanned by these actors. We had hits in our honeypots uh, from one of the actors. Uh, so if they start hitting honeypots and such, it's often a sign that uh, yes, they're pretty much just hitting everybody. So if you do have an exposed, unpatched Microsoft Exchange server, assume it's compromised. And again, the Rapid7 blog has some real good uh, insights into what to look for. Now, whenever there's a big vulnerability like this, it's often easy to overlook other issues. And one that I want to point your attention to is a new patch for Salt Stack. Salt Stack is this IT management suite that has been the target of attackers in the past. Now, this latest vulnerability is just a privilege escalation vulnerability, but very easy to exploit and it does affect the minion component of salt which is what you're installing on the managed system so there's a pretty large footprint of this and an attacker breaking into any one system finding minion installed could use it to escalate privileges the problem here is that minion at one stage is looking for processes running and then essentially passes the name of the process uh, to a command line uh, command and well if uh, the process name includes uh, for example a pipe character this can then lead uh, to arbitrary code execution so a uh, pretty straightforward to exploit and uh, something that you should not overlook if you're running salt stack and grub2 released an update with a number of security improvements uh, the security issues there are not really all that terribly severe uh, but then again grub2 is the bootloader it is responsible for getting a system started securely so without a secure bootloader, there is no secure system. Definitely apply these patches as they become available for your particular distribution. Of course, a reboot is advised after you update Grub2. I think it was last week that I talked about dependency confusion, which happens if a malicious developer releases a package for NPM, Python, or like to a public uh, repository that has the same name as an internal package. Uh, this week, according to some researchers, multiple such attempts were spotted in the wild. Now, some of them were also really sort of more considered graffiti, where uh, people basically published a large a number of packages with more or less random names and simple content uh, like uh, well watch out for supply chain attacks and the like so nothing overly malicious but attackers are certainly starting to play with this vulnerability well and this is it for today so thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow